Lenovo's Legion 5 Pro was one of the best gaming laptops that I tested last year. So let's find out what's changed with the newer 2022 5i Pro and if it's a laptop you should consider. My 5i Pro has Intel's Core i7-12700H CPU, Nvidia's RTX 3070 Ti graphics with maximum power limit, 16 gigs of DDR5 memory and a 16 inch screen. But you can customize the specs and check current prices with the links in the description. The aluminum and magnesium chassis feels nice. No sharp corners or edges anywhere, just a well-built machine. The lid is a bit cleaner this year. Last year's 5 Pro had the big lit up Y logo, while this year we've just got some subtle Legion text towards the top. The front has a little lip sticking out in the middle for the camera which makes it very easy to open the lid. There's not a whole lot of flex to the lid. The metal exterior feels fairly solid and the hinge was sturdy. The screen didn't wobble when typing. There's only minimal flex to the keyboard deck compared to other the laptops, even when pushing down far harder than you'd ever do during normal use. The laptop alone weighs under 2.6 kilos or 5.7 pounds, but then goes up to 3.6 kilos or 7.9 pounds with the included 300 watt power brick and cables. It's about the same size as last year, though the thinnest part towards the front is slimmer now. The 5i Pro has a mock switch and advanced Optimus. The Lenovo Vantage software, the control panel for the laptop, gives us the option to select between these different GPUs modes. None of these actually let us control advanced Optimus though. For example, if we select DGPU mode in Vantage, we still need to reboot to apply the change, which is regular muck switch behaviour. To actually use advanced Optimus, you need to have Vantage on hybrid mode. Then go into the Nvidia control panel to set it how you'd like. So it's a bit clunky right now, but I've been told this could change in an update. The 16 inch screen is 16 by 10 with a resolution slightly bigger than standard 1440p, just like last year. I've got the 165Hz panel, but apparently there's a 240Hz option too. The colour gamut was alright, and the brightness was decent when maxed out. However, the actual brightness level dipped down quite fast when lowering down from 100 to 80%. Not only that, but there's currently a known Nvidia bug that results in the screen getting dimmer when Advanced Optimus swaps over to the discrete graphics. This will happen if you run a game with hybrid mode on and Advanced Optimus on either Automatic Select or Nvidia GPU only. This is why I have two sets of brightness results. If you set Vantage to DGPU mode and reboot, this doesn't happen. So it's a bit annoying, but there's a workaround. I get that bugs happen, but based on this Reddit post I've found, it's not exactly a new issue. The Vantage software lets us enable or disable overdrive, which affects screen response time. With overdrive off, we're looking at a 6.7 millisecond average greater gray response time, but we're able to lower this to 4.4 milliseconds with overdrive on at the expense of a little overshoot and undershoot. It's right in line with last year's Legion 5 Pro and Legion 7, despite it being a different panel. It's one of the best results from a 165Hz screen at this high resolution in any case. A great result. This also helps the 5 Pro have a lower system latency. This is the total amount of time between a mouse click and when a gunshot fires on the screen in CSGO. It's only a millisecond or so faster than last year's 5 Pro, and one of the faster laptops I've tested. Backlight bleed was fairly minor. There are some patchy spots, but not enough to actually notice during regular use, and this will vary between each laptop. There's a 720p camera above the screen in the middle, but there's no IR for Windows Hello Face Unlock. You can disable or enable the camera with the privacy switch on the right of the laptop. Here's how the camera and microphone look and sound by default, but if you're in an area with other people talking, like a cafe or office, it could be hard to properly hear what I'm saying. Most laptops hey, won't bro. be able to deal with other people laptop? talking. That's where this happen? video sponsor Crisp comes in. With the simple click of a button, you're now only hearing me and not anyone else. Crisp is an AI deep tech noise cancellation app that removes background noise. And you can train it to recognize only your voice and ignore everyone else's. Perfect if you're ever in a busy environment. It works bi-directionally too, so you can remove unwanted noise from both ends of a call. That's pretty cool. Even if the disruption is coming from the other end, you'll still be able to hear clearly. Crisp works with both Windows and Mac OS, and supports more than 800 communication apps including popular ones like Zoom, Teams, Slack, Discord and more. So what are you waiting for? Get the latest AI powered noise removal for free with the link below the video. Crisp has a huge research team and works for all sorts of background noise like construction, 
dogs barking, or even that one guy who never stops eating during the call. Again, you can try Crisp completely for free with the link below the video. And now back to the laptop review. The keyboard has four zones of RGB backlighting, and all keys and secondary functions are lit up. You can press the function and spacebar to swap through three different effect profiles, all of which can be customized through the Vantage software. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a way to adjust key brightness without going into software, a feature most other laptops offer, and we only get two brightness levels to choose from. I really liked typing on the keyboard. The keys are grey this year compared to last year's black. It's got 1.5mm of travel, and I thought the keys felt very tactile. But this is of course personal preference, as my partner didn't like it as much. She described the keyboard as feeling squished due to the numpad, and kept accidentally pressing numlock instead of backspace. I really liked using the touchpad too. It just feels accurate and clicky. We're also testing Razer's Blade 17 too, make sure you're subscribed. And while my partner preferred the Blade's touchpad, I definitely preferred the Legion. The left is fairly minimal with just an air exhaust fan, and two Type-C ports. The one closest to the air exhaust is Thunderbolt 4, while the other is USB 3.2 Gen 2. Both offer DisplayPort 1.4 output. The right side has the camera disconnect switch, a 3.5mm audio combo jack, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, and there's an air exhaust on this side too. The rest of the ports are on the back between air exhausts at the corners. From left to right we've got the Gigabit Ethernet port, which unlike last year is facing the preferred way now, so you don't have to lift up the machine to unplug it. There's a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, HDMI 2.1 output, two more USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports for three in total, and the power input on the far right. Lenovo lists the HDMI 2.1 port as being capable of up to 8K 60Hz, and I confirmed that it was able to do 4K 120Hz and with G-Sync over HDMI, so variable refresh rate. The rear and frontmost USB Type-C ports connect directly to the Nvidia graphics. The Thunderbolt 4 port also offers DisplayPort output, but it connects to the Intel integrated graphics. And it also only works if you have Vantage set to hybrid mode. Even if you have hybrid mode enabled and use Advanced Optimus to set NVIDIA graphics only, that port will still work. But if you go through the Vantage software and set DGP only and reboot, then you don't get any display output out of the Thunderbolt port. You can also use the Type-C port on the back to charge the laptop, with up to 135 watts this year compared to 100 watts last year. Though for some reason, I wasn't able to charge it at all using my regular eGPU enclosure that offers 100 watts. Type-C can't provide as much power as the big 300 watt brick, so expect less performance when gaming for instance. Lenovo mentioned they still sell the smaller 230 watt power brick through their website, but I still asked them what the deal was with that larger 300 watt brick. They told me that they do testing with the highest performance mode with a game running, a monitor, keyboard and mouse attached, a phone charging off it, and two USB storage devices connected. So basically a worst case workload. They want to make sure that the battery isn't going to drain under any conceivable scenario. And that's the reason for the larger 300 watt brick. There are also port icons above the actual ports so you can more easily see what you're plugging in while sitting in front of the laptop without needing to turn the machine around. Although definitely useful, they're still hard to see in a darker room when compared to the higher tier Legion 7 which lights them up. Getting inside was challenging, even using the tools linked below the video. You need to remove 10 Phillips head screws, and the four down the front are shorter than the rest. I found the best way to open it was to start prying around the back in the center, then move to the corners. We can see that pretty much the whole back half of the bottom panel has holes for air ventilation right above where the fans are. Once inside, we've got some black metal covers over the storage slots, which are held in with three smaller Phillips head screws, and a metal cover over the RAM that you can pry off. We've got the battery down the front, two M.2 storage slots above on the left and right sides, Wi-Fi 6 card above the installed SSD, and two memory slots. Slots. Wi Fi performance was decent as my model has an Intel card, but it's not quite as good as last year's AMD based Legion 5 Pro. This could be because Lenovo moved the position of the Wi Fi antenna to the front of the machine this year. In last year's model, according to the user guide, the antennas were found in the back corners, but now this year they're found towards the front of the machine. I did actually rerun the Wi Fi tests while typing on the keyboard as I figured my arms would be over the antenna spots, and I found Wi Fi speed lowered 
by about 150 megabits while doing this, so about a 10% dip. Unfortunately, I've just never compared to any other laptop while actually using it with my hands over it during the Wi-Fi test. I just sit it there and let it go so that all the results are consistent. Anyway, even with a 10% dip, it's far from unusable and it still worked fine. But that said, this newer placement did result in a measurable dip while typing on the keyboard. We've got two sticks of DDR5 4800X16 memory here, and while X16 with DDR4 is slower than X8, this doesn't seem to matter much at all with the newer DDR5 memory. I made a whole video comparing X8 and X16 gaming performance with the 5i Pro and found them to be much the same, so I wouldn't bother worrying about it this year. I've given this year's 5i Pro the same upgradability score as the 5 Pro last year as we've got the same options. I gave ease of access half a point because it's harder to open compared to most others, but otherwise we can change both M.2 storage slots, Wi-Fi, and both RAM sticks. There are speakers on the left and right sides towards the front. I thought they sounded pretty average for a gaming laptop. There's a little bass, and they get loud enough. Nothing amazing though. Like pretty much every gaming laptop with Windows 11 I've covered this year, the latency mon results weren't looking ideal. There didn't seem to be much that wasn't just standard Windows stuff causing it. This doesn't seem to be unique to Lenovo. The 5i Pro is powered by a 4-cell 80 watt hour battery, and we've got the option of enabling conservation mode through the Vantage software to limit the maximum charge level between 75 and 80 percent, which helps with battery longevity. This can not be used at the same time as the faster rapid charge option though. We can also make use of the different iGPU modes to disable the power hungry discrete graphics. In theory, they shouldn't activate during light workloads with just hybrid mode, aka Optimus on, but in this mode, the discrete graphics are still technically available if random installed apps want to call on them. I want to note that unlike Asus laptops, where picking the iGPU mode just disables the DGPU in Windows straight away, I didn't find the swap to take place on the 5i Pro until rebooting. The iGPU mode wasn't really making much of a difference. Running purely off the discrete graphics was much worse though, as expected. The battery life wasn't amazing compared to other laptops for a couple of reasons. The first is that Intel just generally doesn't last as long compared to AMD. However, we also can't fairly compare with last year's AMD based 5 Pro here. At the start of this year, I started limiting screen brightness to 200 nits in this test. Previously, I just arbitrarily set them to 50% brightness. So while not comparable here, we'll have much more comparable data going forward. Let's check out thermals next. The cooling has been improved this year. There's an additional heat pipe here on the left that wasn't there last year, and there are other changes to the fans. The Lenovo Vantage software lets us change between different performance modes, which from lowest to highest are quiet, balance, and performance. Balance mode also has an optional AI setting which is meant to provide an optimal experience for around 20 games. More on that a bit later. You can also use the function plus Q shortcut to change between the three performance modes, and the color of the power button will change so you can easily tell which is currently in use, as noted here. Right now, in early March 2022, there still isn't any fan control on these new Legion laptops. However, they've told me that it's something that they're currently investigating, so it might come in a future update through Vantage. But for now, you can still use the community-made fan control software called Legion Fan Control. I haven't tested it myself, but a lot of people in my Discord I'd have mentioned it, and I'll leave links to both of those below the video. The temperatures were quite cool at idle. The rest of the results are from combined CPU and GPU stress tests, which aim to represent a worst case. With the stress tests running, quiet mode was the coolest, balance mode was warmer, then performance mode was the warmest. The cooling pad I test with, which is linked below the video, was able to lower the temperatures by a further 8 degrees. A decent improvement, but we weren't thermal throttling without it. These are the clock speeds for the same tests just shown. There's no difference with or without the cooling pad to performance because thermals weren't a limitation. But we can still run cooler with a cooling pad if that's preferable. The GPU clock speeds in green get Get progressively better as we step up from the lowest to highest performance mode. The CPU speeds in blue don't really change between balance and performance mode. And we can see why when looking at the power levels. Lenovo seemed to be capping the i7-12700H to a 45 watt power limit while the GPU is also active at the same time. So that would also be the case with a game running for example. The GPU was quite high however at nearly 140 watts, a great result for a 3070 Ti. 
it's possible that the GPU can only get this high due to the 45 watt limit on the CPU. But given this laptop has a resolution higher than 1440p, I'd argue the higher GPU power limit probably helps it out more in games than the processor. In a CPU only workload like Cinebench though, the processor was able to run at 90 watts in the highest performance mode. This is double the limit compared to when the GPU was also active, and this is why it's able to score so well. It's stacking up impressively compared to other laptops. The Legion 5i Pro with i7-12700H is now the best multi-core score that we've got at more than 1100 points higher compared to the thicker and more expensive MSI GE76 with i9. This would purely be due to a higher sustained power limit, but the i9 still has the edge in single core due to the higher single core turbo boost. The performance is still quite good when running on battery power. Like other Intel 12th gen laptops, the single core score is still up there as one of the best results. But now even 8 core 16 thread Ryzen options from last generation are able to do better in multi-core. The keyboard was below the typical 30 degrees Celsius when just sitting there idle, so quite cool compared to others. It doesn't get too much warmer with the stress tests running either, just a few degrees warmer for the keyboard. Balance mode was perhaps slightly warmer, but overall it's still cool. It's warmer right up the back, but you don't need to touch there. The highest performance mode wasn't much different either. Even the hotspots near the arrows felt fine. Let's have a listen to the fans. The fans were still audible when it was just sitting there idle. They weren't loud or anything, but you can hear them. It was still relatively quiet with the stress tests, but then gets louder from the higher performance modes as you'd expect. It's one decibel higher than last year's 5 Pro in performance mode, but the lower modes were quieter. Now let's find out how this year's Legion 5i Pro actually performs in games and compares against other laptops. We're going to be comparing games at both 1080p and 1440p resolutions, as this is what I've got data for for the purposes of comparing. But check out this video next if you also want to see how the 5i Pro actually performs in 10 plus games at all setting levels with and without features like DLSS and ray tracing at its native 2560 by 1600 resolution. Cyberpunk 2077 was tested the same on all laptops, and I've got this year's 5i Pro shown by the red highlight. As you might expect, the RTX 3070 Ti graphics is coming out ahead of the other RTX 3070 results. However, it's only like 1 FPS ahead of last year's Ryzen based Legion 5 Pro with RTX 3070, even though that had a lower maximum GPU power limit. To be fair though, the 1% low from the newer Intel 12th gen system was 19% higher, so less dips in performance. We've got a different selection of laptops at the higher 1440p resolution, as we only test machines that actually have a chance of running it. This time the older Ryzen based Legion 5 Pro was just ahead of it, though at less than a 1 FPS difference, this is absolutely within margin of error, and the newer 12th gen model still had a higher 1% low. The 5i Pro was also ahead of other 3070 gaming laptops at 1080p in control, this time with a larger lead over the lower spec 5 Pro from the year before. It's ahead of all other 3070 laptops, as you'd expect to see, but it's also beating a few other 3080 machines like the Alienware M15R6 and SCAR15. It's still sitting somewhere between most of the 3080 and 3070 results at the higher 1440p resolution, which is where you'd expect to see the 3070 Ti based on the name. Anyway, absolutely playable at max settings with this higher resolution. And this is before we even enable DLSS, which would further boost performance. You can see ray tracing and DLSS results with the link in the video description. All right, we need to talk about the AI setting that's available in balanced mode. The idea behind this is that Lenovo runs a bunch of tests for different games to work out the optimal level of CPU and GPU power limits for best results. Sounds good, so let's see how it performs. Rainbow Six Siege was tested with the game's benchmark, and is a title that supports the AI feature. We're seeing a 5 FPS boost with AI enabled compared to regular balance mode, or less than a 3% boost at this high frame rate. The fan noise was 48 decibels in both balance modes, while performance mode was higher at 52.5. Battlefield 5 is an older game that we stopped testing, but is apparently supported with the AI feature, so we've given it a go. There's basically 
basically no change here. Results are within margin of error compared to balance mode without AI. And the fan noise was the same here as in Rainbow Six. While the AI mode sounds good in theory, I've got at least two issues with it. Firstly, based on the two games we tested, it just wasn't doing a whole lot. Best case, we could get a small boost. So definitely not nothing, but also nothing major. Maybe the results would be different at different setting levels, different resolutions, or perhaps different parts of the game. There's only so much we can test unfortunately. The other issue is that I just couldn't find a list of the games that are actually supported by the AI mode. In the past, I think there was a list of about 20 or so games, but I just couldn't find it anywhere. Which made it hard to pick games to test, and that's why we resorted to Battlefield 5. If I can't find the games that AI mode is meant to boost, how was anyone else meant to? I think it would be nice if in the Vantage software there was a little help icon or something that you could click, and it would open up a list of all the supported games. Here are the 3D mark results for those that find them useful. Now for some content creator tests. Adobe Premiere was tested with the Puget Systems benchmark, and the 5i Pro was one of the best results tested so far, only a little behind the thicker and more expensive GE76 at the top. Adobe Photoshop was a little lower in this same selection of laptops, but still a great result and right up there with some high spec machines. We're looking at a 24% higher score compared to last year's AMD based 5 Pro with 3070. DaVinci Resolve is more GPU heavy, and the high wattage 3070 Ti is giving us a great result. The processor clearly does affect the score as well though, considering our top results are again all Intel 12th gen. I've also tested SpecViewPerf which tests out various professional 3D workloads. Intel 12th gen supports faster PCIe Gen 4 storage, and as a result we're getting some of the best read and write speeds that I've ever seen from a gaming laptop. The BIOS has a lot more options compared to other gaming laptops like ASUS, but not quite as much customization as MSI's advanced BIOS. A lot of the options in here can also be modified through the Vantage software anyway, such as GPU overclocking or flip to boot, which automatically powers on the laptop when you open the lid. Linux support was tested by booting an Ubuntu 21 Live CD. By default, the keyboard, touchpad, ethernet, and speakers worked. Wi-Fi didn't work with this OS out of the box, but probably just needs some extra drivers. Keyboard shortcuts to change keyboard lighting, adjust volume, and performance modes still work as these are baked into firmware but the screen brightness keys did not work by default. Let's discuss pricing and availability next. This will of course change over time, so refer to those links in the description for updates. As I've got my hands on the Legion 5i Pro very early, right now there's only information on the lower spec 3050 Ti configuration, which is almost 1800 US dollars. Honestly, this isn't great at all. I can only assume, or at least hope, that over time we'll get more configurations available and also at lower prices. I have seen this with other brands in the past right as they launch a new model. They seem to just price it super high, hoping that the people that really want it are going to pay the extra. So yeah, hopefully this changes pretty shortly. Because yeah, realistically, $1,800 for a 3050 Ti, that's kind of a joke, regardless of the laptop chassis that it's in. You could easily get way better performance from an RTX 3060, maybe even a 3070 in some cases for that type of money. So it just doesn't make sense assuming performance is something you're after. Price aside though, which as mentioned will change over time, let's discuss both the good and the bad aspects of the 5 Pro to help you decide if it's a laptop you should consider buying. The 12th gen CPU performance is excellent due to high power limits, while the lowest CPU power limit when the GPU is also active seems to prevent it getting too hot and needing louder fans. The 300 watt power brick is still huge, but you can get a smaller 230 watt version. Not to mention Type-C charging now goes higher to 135 watts. Still though, when I compare it to the size of Razer's 280 watt charger, I think there could be an improvement. Though that probably would raise the cost. Razer isn't exactly known for being cheap. There are definitely some welcome changes compared to last year's model, but at the same time there's also not anything earth shattering. I've said in the past that the 5 Pro series was one of the best available, so I suppose when you've already got one of the best laptops available there's not a whole lot to improve on. That said, I still want the fan control update, and the bug where the screen goes dimmer with advanced Optimus when the discrete graphics is active needs to be fixed. That does seem to be an Nvidia issue rather than Lenovo but you as a customer don't care, you just want your laptop to work. Honestly, all things considered, if you can find the last year's version of the 5 Pro, I'd probably consider that if it's cheaper. The performance in games just doesn't seem to be a whole lot better despite having newer 12th gen CPU and higher power limit 3070 Ti graphics. But other applications like content creator workloads did see fairly big boosts, it just depends on what you're doing. Check out how the 5i Pro performs in 12 different games at all setting levels at its native resolution in this video next. And make sure you're subscribed for more Lenovo reviews. I've got 
with the Legion 5, Legion 7, Legion 7 Slim, and Ideapad series on the way. And you definitely don't want to miss those.